All right, now we move forward for the next presentation of the day, which is having the theme as the role of international funding agencies in supporting the cost-effective, pollution-free and sustainable metro rail system in Indian Tire Two Cities. Well, for that matter, we're going to have um, him who is uh, none other than the All India Civil Service, uh, Services 1988 batch IRAS, Indian Railways. Cadre officer is now the managing director of the Andhra Pradesh Metro Rail Corporation Limited. He has been working for the last six years in the Andhra Pradesh state owned corporation, dealing with four major metro rail and other urban transportation projects under implementation by Andhra Pradesh state government, worth more than rupees 40,000 crores in value. He is none other than Sri UJM Rao. IRAS, MD, APMRC. Can we have you here on the stage, sir, for the presentation, which is having the theme as the role of international funding agencies in supporting the cost-effective, pollution-free and sustainable metro rail system in India Tier 2 cities. So, can we have the presentation on board? Everyone, please put your hands together as he makes his way. We are looking forward to have a great presentation, a very informative presentation. A very good afternoon to everybody. Friends, actually the subject is uh, that uh, funding agencies, particularly the external aided agencies, foreign funding agencies, uh, they are coming up to financially support the metro rail projects, uh, which is the green mobility, which is the talk of the day. Everywhere in the world, Everybody is going towards green mobility. So India has come up in a big way for the last five years. We have in 28 cities already and aiming at going for another 50 countries, total 75 cities in, the, in India. We wanted to have this metro rail systems big or small. So these systems will come and uh, the government of India has allocated 3 lakh crore rupees for the next five years to spend on these projects. So I would like to tell a, a few things to about this uh, funding to these projects because these projects is, uh, though they have lot many advantages, it is a capital intensive projects and the state governments have to bear 80% of the project cost. 20% will be given as a grant by the government of India and 80% by the other governments. So let us, um, let us go to the... So let us quickly go back. Metro rail systems value added advantages are fast and time saving trans transportation and very safe and zero accident travel, eco friendly green mobility, zero pollution preventing health hazards, comfortable and stress free journey. These are all general words, popular words. I need not again explain everything. So once you go through, you can understand what metro rails can give to the commuters, what metro rail can make the society healthier, a healthier India. Affordable public transportation and it is reliable and punctual, it is very reliable time. You, will, you can calculate in minutes by which time you will reach your work office. So then again, a great energy saver, but again uh, for diesel and uh, in comparison to diesel and uh, petrol, it is 35% lesser in commu uh, commuting. So these are the advantages, but again, there are certain challenges also. These are the challenges we have capital intensive projects needs a huge investment needs a huge investment because each as i told you earlier also 
each kilometer is 250 crores per kilometer. So he can calculate 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers like that. So every city, every state government is starting with 20 to 25. But 25 kilometer never gives you the desired break-even point in 10 years. 40 kilometers should be the ideal kilometers for the metros to make it viable in a reasonable period of 10 years. Rail, friends, rails and metro rails are rail-based systems for which operation maintenance is very moderate. The repairs and uh, spares and all that, very rarely you put it. It's only on the staff cost, but again, in the metro rails, it is driverless operation system, the most modern signaling systems. With all that, we have reduced greatly this uh, staff cost by 20% of the cost only. So, capital intensive new uh, investment and highly technical, the highly technical personnel required because runs on software and uh, uh, remotely operated from the operation command control. So every train is like 8 minutes, 8 minutes, 8 minutes. You can't say that Pala Gadi Nai Gaya, 15 minutes or 30 minutes of Ruk Jaiye. No. For commuters, time is very essential, very important. Every 8 minutes you have to go. So, if there is any hiccups, any the problem, then the next train will take the, from the sensor it will take and it will slow down. Like that, there will be zero accident. Very safe. The complexity, complexity is there for the operators, for the management, but for the computers, for the people, it's so smooth, so nice, so punctual. And come to longer break-even points, as I said, initially we have to put a lot of money. So this money we have to take either from banks or from funding agencies, financial institutions and funding agencies from outside the country or inside the country. So it entails, it entails interest, rate of interest. So with that capital cost will be high unless you pay it back fast. So the long break-even points less attractive. That's why governments only out of 28 projects, out of 80 pro 60 projects in the 28 cities, there are 60 projects. 60 projects mean phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, like Delhi. If it is four pages, four projects I am taking, like that 60 pro projects are going on. Out of the 60, only three are on PPP model because the huge capital cost you have to put it. Only governments can put that's that uh, idea. So let's and financial viability. Financial viability, again, ridership issues will be there. So other issues like during construction, we have land acquisition and R&R. In many cities, this is a big issue. You have seen in Mumbai also, but that uh, depot, there was a lo long fight, legal fight, and finally they achieved it, like that. Sometime in, uh, even in uh, Hyderabad, three kilometers in the old city, they could not do it. They left it. Like that, there is a problem will be there. So these things are to be sorted out by the management. So these challenges we have to see. So this is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The 92 member nation forum decided to limit global warming level by 1.5 degrees C by the end of the century. 1.5 degree normal se kam karna itna mushkil hai. They have given a long target. So they made it nationally determined contributions. Nationally determined contributions means countries, countries member countries, each country has a target. So this target, they have to meet it by the countries to reach desired global warming levels by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. This calls for a great transformation of 
economic and social situation in the countries. Of course, in the developed countries, they have already known, but in the developing and underdeveloped conditions, there is a great need. A revolutionary change should be required in the economic and social transformation. To achieve the common agenda, one of the important decisions is taken is because they have seen what is the carbon emissions, the uh, density of carbon emissions, it has to be reduced. In developed countries, in European countries, roads are very wide. There is no population, uh, issues are not there. So they are already achieved that this thing. So for them also, a target was given. What is the target? They have to help the developing and underdeveloped countries, countries with operationally, technically and financially. Then, when you are helping them, the carbon credits which are coming, in that 50% will go to the, that country, that developed country, and 50% marks will be coming to the um, uh, eight taken country. Maybe India. India is one of the countries taking this help of the developed countries. And uh, Article 9 may, particularly the whole chapter is on the financial assistance to the green environmental friendly projects like metro rail transportation systems. The foreign funding agencies like JICA, KXIM, KFW, AFD, NDB, all these uh, uh, funding agencies are now in the infrastructure, they are giving preference to metro rails. Why metro rails, I told you. If they give it to from, for power project or some other project, some other project, they will not get uh, this uh, uh, carbon credits. Here they are getting carbon credits. They have certain targets to fulfill. So that's why they are coming more to, to, uh, to assist the green projects, green urban mobility projects. So Metro Rail System is the nickname or alias green mobility. So then come to carbon credits are assigned to both the countries in reaching the NDCs. NDCs means member countries. So it's a, actually it is for the funding agencies I have prepared. So I was told that uh, the World Bank uh, representatives from uh, KFW, FD and all the will come. So I wanted to uh, tell them my focus is on the funding support to environmental infrastructure projects like metro rail projects which for the further simplification of soft loans now they are giving soft loans but there is a rigid conditions there is a rigid conditions from their side following are my sessions at present uh, they are giving oda loans official development assistance loans they call it it's a, a technical term used by Government of India, Minister of Finance. So, they are giving the, all these uh, foreign funding agencies are giving the government project to government project. But, I request these agencies to give to PPP projects also, because the Government of India is telling a big way that go for PPP. Go for PPP projects. More and more, they are encouraging so when they are encouraging PPP projects, all the road projects are going on PPP. How many toll gates are there? How much you are paying? If somebody is coming from Vizag to Vijayawada, about 400 kilometers, toll, the, the cost of your fuel will be 1000 rupees, your tolls will be 1000 rupees. So, how, how, how this PPP is going to uh, uh, make a hole in the pocket of uh, uh, people? So, we don't want to do that. The PPP, the project only, management only we have to pay and we have to make comfort, uh, affordable transport to the people. People should not suffer. That's that, uh, my intention. That's why 
I am giving to the government of India a suggestion that let these people give to the PPP projects also because I have an experience with the South Korean funding agency K Exum. They studied my Vizag project for one and a half years and they said very nice project, a lucrative project and their audit ag uh, auditing agency, they have also verified. They said, yeah, it's very good project, you can go. Then what happened? When they have sent it to the gov government, South Korean government, they said, no, we are giving to G2G only. Now this project will be 30 years uh, uh, with the private uh, developer. So how can we go to a private party? That way they have uh, said, right now we cannot give it. So these things should not be there. Government of India take more interest to see that the um, ODA loan is extended to PPP projects also. Why am I uh, asking PPP uh, for PPP also? In Indian banks, the rate of interest is now 8.5 like that. Maybe 8.15 the State Bank of India is giving after a lot of negotiation, but again, the repayment period is only 10 years. But these soft uh, loans, have 25 years period of repayment, 10 years of uh, uh, preliminary moratorium period, no payment period like that. So with all that, the rate of interest also, they were giving 3.5% for infra projects. But for because it is a green project, now they are coming forward to give it at 0.5% to 1.5% only because of this reduction or incentive or concession whatever you say now they are giving the all the developing countries is giving we are taking the advantage that's why that the five years there is so many metros are coming metro railway industries is going up and i request all the uh, industries connected to rail and uh, metro rail industry to have their capacity increases and we have three projects right now on hand. So I would like to take all of you, um, your help and your resistance to make it possible. And need to promote Indian policies by metro rail managements like Make in India, why tide loans? Tide loans are there. Some countries are giving, again they said, 30% of money they have, we have to spend on the equipment, on the rolling stock, they give from their country. Some countries 20%, some countries 30%. Again, we have to go there and bring that, import those rolling stock or systems. So now I request this tied loans should not be there. Make in India has been um, promoting we are. So let those countries have a joint ventures in our country, they can have their manufacturing units in India because India has a very big market, very huge market and they can uh, market it for the next 10 years, 15 years. But again for spares and uh, replacements, anyway there is a requirement forever. So. A strict imposition of penalties and the time extensions in the contracts. There is one condition that contracts will be uh, will be vetted by them. There the penalty clause is very, very uh, rigid in that those countries. But in uh, India, you know, initially they will give eight, eight months, but it will take four years, five years. And we take very easily because there are so many external factors which are causing this thing. Nobody can, either management or the contractor. Poor contractor, what he can do? So, to accommodate all these things, small, small things, uh, unexplained things, so we liberally give extension. So, But here they said, no, time is time. If it is not completed in one year, finish. You have to pay 20% or 30% that thing where he will, he will close it and go away. So it's not the, we have to make it successful. 
if we have to make it successful uh, the uh, um, uh, the projects of huge uh, capital costs we have to have a a bit soft flexi contractual conditions that's what my uh, appeal and that to reduce the time slots of activities because in the loan agreement when they signed there is a, a lot many things first they will come a fact finding committee first a preliminary meeting fact finding committee then there is a technical mission and there is appraisal committee then there is a financial appraisal committee then there is a wrap up there is low, so many things it is it's all taking one and a half to two years time it is taking I would request the financial closure must be nine months. Come on, we are ready. And the funding agencies also, I request them to come up and within nine months you have to close it. Whatever information is required, we give it and they have to close it. And more concessionality to be extended to environmental friendly metro projects, ROI to be minimum in view of hedging costs is involved. Because the, all these funds are coming in uh, euros or uh, dollars, US dollars mainly, then euros also. But again, when it uh, is given, we have to again give it in the US dollars or euros. So at that time, exchange rate we have to take, so that will be very high. So the hedging cost that is called, that is more. Today, 5 to 6 percent hedging cost. If they give it 1.5 percent, it is coming to 7.5 percent. So, if the hedging cost goes up, it will finally work out more than our uh, local banks' rates. So, that's why I request them to keep it less than 1 percent because it is a green mobility. It is for the people. It is. So, sovereign guarantee fee to be waived off. There is a sovereign guarantee for the agreement. And uh, by default, if default, they will uh, uh, take this guarantee fee. So that I am telling to waive it or to be kept marginal. A request for technical cooperation on 100% concessionality terms. So these things I am suggesting to, the, uh, to them. Uh, but uh, here I have seen so many industries people, I wanted to present another uh, uh, this uh, Vizag Metro project for all of you because uh, we are taking up four projects but the priority and the kickoff is from Vizag project. I just wanted to show it. I have read so many times but I have to show it up. This is the uh, platform where I can show everybody about the project. Very quickly I am going and uh, I have also already promised to many of you that I will have one-to-one -one discussion, detailed discussion. Definitely we will take the help of everybody. So friends, there is a technical problem but not mental problem, I can tell. I can explain to you. We have designed light metro system for Vizag and Vijaywada. It is 20 to 25 percent lesser costlier than our uh, conventional metro. Metros in Delhi, Mumbai, or Bangalore, Hyderabad, it will because the population is more than one crore. So there is a possibility of running with profits or without losses. But small places like Kochi, Lucknow, how it can be profitable, how it can run without losses, without much burden to the state government. Already with the construction, 80% cost they have uh, incurred and there is already a burden and during O&M also, during the uh, commercial operations also, if you are uh, every year, you are incurring losses, what is this? So we have to make it a sustainable one. So first you have to cut the capital cost. How I am making it? See, 
with the ridership for the cities for 30 to 40. Huh. Right. Okay. So, this is the system I am introducing in the uh, Visakhapatnam, which is only 185 crores per kilometer, whereas 250 crores per kilometer for all conventional. How it is? There it is, each, each metro car has 265 people can go in the Delhi metro. Let us go with the Delhi metro versus Vizag metro. My car will have 225 only. And I am running initially with two coaches. With two coaches and they are telling three coaches. Three coaches into 265 is equal to 800 people can go. 800 people means 10 bus, uh, 14 buses. So 50, 50 to 60 people if a bus can carry. How many buses? 15 buses. So 15 buses will come. 15 buses will take people and again another 15 buses will come after 8 minutes. Is it required for my city? Is it required for a uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities? Not required. So here I am putting a system which is two cars. Each car is 225. 225 to 225, it is coming to 500 people. So the 500 people, so it is uh, equivalent to some eight buses. So eight buses will come for eight minutes. Like that it will go. Uh, slowly, if the population is growing up, so I can add it on third, fourth, five, like that I can add it up. Or I can make it this eight minutes to six minutes, five minutes, four minutes, Three minutes. Of course, the technically it is two minutes they said, but three minutes we will put it for Indian Indian conditions. We have to put it three minutes, uh, uh, car to car and this thing and all that, because we have to put uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes as a stop for each one. So that will be like that. So this is the uh, Visakhapatnam is 76.9 kilometers of uh, this thing. We have taken all the four corridors. The total project cost is uh, 14,309. Uh, the estimated ridership is 5 lakhs in 2026 and uh, to go to 12 lakhs in 2056. Uh, still, this system is sufficient for that. After 2056, I am upgrading my system because the base, the base, the uh, ele uh, elevated uh, portion uh, and the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, what is what is the power or that uh, this thing we will keep it and the uh, rails and all that it will take the 17 tons um, uh, capacity, but only the systems, uh, the metro rail rolling stock and other things we have to change it, and the stations now. It is for, because it is two, we have made it for four coaches because some evacuation and all will be there for four. Four coaches, we have made the platform. And again, we have put it for possibility for the higher version. So we have, are going with the foundations and the station will be expanded after 35 years. So to suit the higher version of metro. So with this, there is a lot of saving in the civil engineering construction or in the systems and uh, uh, rolling stock. And every, every stage we have a, this is the third rail, everything, comfort is the same thing. This is the third rail, there also third rail, here also third rail. There are also the driverless operations. I am also taking from day one uh, with the driverless operations. So, e-cycle, c rickshaw all these facilities, AFC, automatic fare collection, everything will be there. But only a lesser capacity we are taking, we start with by cutting 25% of the, this thing. 
In this, in the OM also, your energy charges, energy will be very less. So this is the cost optimization, how we made it. The project planned, uh, if it is X, so light metro is 10% lesser than this thing, project. It is a smaller depots and stations in the, this thing. Second one is civil engineering structures. There is a 15% reduction because of the axle load reduction right now. So load bearing reduced by 25%. And the stations, the stations, 140 is the medium metro or the conventional metro, but my stations will be now 80 uh, M can be elongated to 140. It can be upgradable in all respects after 35 to 40 years. Am I required to create a system which is required after 40 years? Right now, not necessary. This is the beauty of this uh, light metro system, what we are arranging, uh, friends, after implementation, after implementation, everybody, every tier to tier to the city will take a call and will ta take this system. Depots, here 45 acres minimum is required for us, 30 acres will be enough. There is a lot of land cost can be this thing, but land we are taking 45, telling that expansion, but that 15 acres we are giving for property development, commercial development, so that we can earn something to reduce the losses or to support our uh, expenditure, right? So rolling stock, here three plus three car system we are adopting in Delhi and other places and we are making two plus one, one plus two. One, one, we can add it up. here. The number of uh, fleet, if you take it, 30% reduction I have shown. Cost per kilometer is 250 crores and it is 185, so it is coming to 25, this thing, 25% lesser. So this is the uh, various conventional metro, light metro, metro light, metro neo. So why I have shown it? to show that metro light and metro neo may not be able to, I'm not, sorry, I'm not uh, comparing any of these things, but uh, may not uh, be uh, so much supportive to the uh, ridership. So the light metro will be just sufficient for us and with, a, with all facilities we can run this. So only, only few slides I have shown you. So any questions, friends, we can, uh, we are ready. I am ready to answer you about this light metric system where 25% I am saving. So as OM also, as, a, as I said, the uh, number of, see, number of, uh, it, number of entries. Okay. Yeah, uh, you, 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 Hello. Do we have any questions uh, from the audience? You can raise your hand and then ask the questions. Of course, followed by your name. So. Sir, up here. Please. Hello. Sir, sir, uh, good up, sir. It was really excellent presentation. I have two questions. I am J.K. Bharti, AGM Rights. My one question is, in one of the slides, you have told in 28 cities, 60 metro projects are under operation. And presently, only three PP project, PPP projects are there. My question is, you have said that funding agencies, they are giving from, from government to government. And in one of the slides, you have told that it is appeal from your side that they should also give the fund to PPP projects. How it is possible, who will take the responsibility so far as the return of the fund is concerned? Number one. My second question is, 
you have told in one of the slides that when the metro corridor is less than 40 percent, it is not sustainable and it is also not viable. Then if you see the Jaipur metro, it was only 9 kilometers. Can you tell me if any suggestion or amendment is required so far as metro policy 2017 is concerned? Uh, so this is, this is the government of India cannot rigidly say 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers and 40 kilometers because each kilometer adds 250 crores. So it is for the state governments to take uh, a decision that how many kilometers you can go. So as a finance man, I, am a, uh, I was a financial advisor and chief accounts officer of Indian Railways. For about uh, 37 years, I had experience uh, doing with a uh, lot many projects on railways and now uh, four projects on metro rails. I have seen that the profit, uh, financial viability for 30 years we are uh, working out, it works out when it is 40 kilometers, 40 kilometers, then you are getting the uh, right um, uh, FIRR, you are getting it. If it is lesser than that, we are not getting because the ridership for 9 kilometers, people, two-wheelers don't want to go. Then I have to get down and go in other, other uh, this thing. At least it should be 40 kilometers, then only it is working out because the average trip length will be more. If your uh, total kilometer is only 20 kilometers, your average length is 5 only. Now for 40 kilometers, it will be 10 kilometers as an average trip length. If you take average trip length and you calculate the ridership and the earnings, that is coming, if uh, FIRR is coming more than 8%. 8% is the benchmark, of course, in the metro rail policy, they have taken out that uh, condition because uh, for uh, 20 kilometers or 25 kilometers is not working out. It is coming only 4% to 5%. So, uh, 40, 40 kilometers is uh, my, my assumption, my this thing, decision, this thing. So, we are going for 76.90, almost 77 kilometers in Vaisag and uh, capital cost is cut by 25 percent, so it is becoming a lucrative project. That's what I wanted to say. That's, the other one, funding agencies, why they have to give? That is, the, that is your question, sir. I'm sure. So the foreign funding agencies is coming to, uh, going to G, G, G to G, government to government, and the PPP project also for the government. Metro Railway, LRT, kiske liye ka, kar rahe? It is not for him. It is for the Telangana, it is for the people of Hyderabad. The, it is for the people good. It is for the people's appreciation. Votes milta hai inko. LRT uh, is making the construction and at his cost. So, he will take a 10% uh, uh, interest and he will be paying and the Fruits are going to the Telangana government and the Telangana people. Why you cannot give to PPP projects? It is a government-linked project. PPP projects, may, government of India is giving a grant 20%. Government of uh, state, say Andhra Pradesh, 20%. 60% cost, project cost, private person will come and put it 20% and he will run the system for the 30 to 35 years um, and uh, enjoy all types of revenues on that. Because OEM is also uh, certain things will go, but he will be getting that. So that is the benefit for, the, for those people. So if the government, if the, if the foreign funding agencies versus Indian government, if now PPP projects, uh, suppose Hyderabad or Pune, they are taking from State Bank of India. They have taken at 10.5 percent. 
that 10.5 percent. Uh, of course, now it has come to 8.5 percent, 2 percent has come down, but uh, they have to pay at that uh, rate only. So they are uh, coming from the local uh, this thing, and they are paying it, paying it within 10 years because in Indian uh, as per RBI rules, only maximum 10 years only. After 10 years, if they cannot pay, the loan will be rollover for another five years. It is called rollover. When rollover is there, and again the bank will put some premium. That premium you have to, they will add it and you have to pay it. Because you could not pay it in time, as per their uh, time. Whereas, says Jaika, Jaika is giving for 30 years, 35 years, longer period. So the governments can pay from their, uh, um, uh, from their pocket slowly. So as the private uh, party, if a private party gets at 0.5%, from the uh, from them after all he is not uh, taking the entire uh, benefit there benefit is only for 30 years 30 years ke baad, after all it is a government project sir can, can i sir can i interfere sir excuse me sir can uh, i interfere can i interfere uh, yeah, yeah yeah my only simple question sir when you say that the metro corridor or length is less than 40 kilometer the project is financially not viable, it is not sustainable. My only question is, should the government amend the Metro policy 2017 if at any cost the length of the Metro is less than 40 kilometers, that it should not be executed? This is the only my question. Uh, yes, yes, I, I understand. That's what I, I told you, that 40 kilometers into 20, 250 um, crores per kilometer comes to 10,000 crores. 10,000 crores may 20 percent government of India will give, 8,000 crores state government has to bear. So that much, that much amount, 8,000 crores on a single project, state governments cannot bear. That's why they are going in a slowly, slowly going a, a, for a higher this thing. This 27 called 9 kilometers, somebody has made it, that, uh, that's not there. Uh, no, no, sir. At least my, 23 to 26 sir, my only question was, should uh. the government should say, when the length of corridor is less than 40 kilometers, that metro should not be executed? No, I, that's not, I'm not telling that one. Oh, right, sir. That, I'm not telling that below 40 should not be done, I never said that. But if, if 40 kilometers has done at one go, though there is a... Uh, capital cost is huge uh, on a long run you will have comfortable uh, this uh, break even point will come within 10 to 11 years that's what i am telling this thank you sir uh, any uh, after no, that sir, so far as that i was asked this question i was asking the funding agencies if they are giving the loan to ppp who will take the responsibility to return the fund, that's was my question. Go no, government will take the responsibility. No, I am not saying government, to, it is okay from funding to government is okay. When any funding agency yes. is giving loan to private players, who will take the responsibility that the fund will be returned? Sir, it is not a private project, it is a PPP project means public-private partnership. There is a strong legal agreement between the government and the private party. There is already this thing. And this funding agency also will come and when they fund to private people, then they will be, uh, there will be tripartite agreement. Okay. State you, government sir, also will do. The private party, if they feel, he will take the responsibility. Government will take the responsibility. State government will take the responsibility. That is there, sir. There is a, then only they will give. That's Thank what, you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, that's what I... And any, anything else? Hello. Sir, I am Yoganand from BML. Ah. Uh, sir, I just would like to know, uh, what is the foreign funding uh, percentage uh, we are getting, SI in India, and uh, uh, from uh, to our Andhra state government, uh, towards uh, this uh, metro projects? Now, the loan component is, yeah. loan component is 70 Roughly to have an idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. I agree. So, the... Uh, 20%, 20% in a project cost, 40% government of India and the respective state government has to bear yeah. as the equity and 
taxes and duties. Sixty okay. percent will be loan component. Uh -huh. For this sixty percent, the funding agencies are coming forward and giving it. And who are sir? Normally, this Jaika and Korea, other than that. Uh, all, all are on the same this thing. Uh -huh. Government of India will uh, decide on that. Uh -huh. The loan component, uh, sixty percent of the project cost can be given. Okay. On this soft loan terms. Okay, sir. Uh, what is the percentage of uh, uh, money we have to invest in infrastructure and rolling stock? Roughly, approximate percentage. Uh, that percentage is uh, the, the generally in the project cost, fifty-three percent go to civil works mm. and 45 percent goes to rails, rails, rolling stock, signaling system, telecom, AFC and all will take 45 percent of the project cost. Three percent will be miscellaneous like CC cameras, this, that and uh, the electrical uh, things and all that. I am talking of the elevated metro. Uh, generally, elevated metro only everywhere, underground though it is a different uh, uh, type. So, this is the thing, 53, 45, 3 percent of this thing like that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all put our hands together? I know that you want to ask questions, but we can have a one-to-one -one discussion. Uh, thank you so much, Sri UJM Rao. That was very amazing having you on board with us. Thank you. Thank you so much.